Hello beautiful makers, welcome to Stitching the High Notes, episode 60. I can't believe it is episode 60. This is a YouTube channel all about knitting, sewing, cross-stitching, music, the arts, and all things crafty. My name is Joanna, and you can see what I'm up to on the interwebs as Opera Joe, most notably on Instagram and Ravelry. And you can also find things for your multi-craftual spirit at stitchingthehighnotes.com, a new online shop which I just recently opened. In there, there are cross-stitch bags, knitting bags, stitch markers, and so much more. You can also um, see what's coming down the line to the shop um, and things that I'm making for the shop and for fun as well <laughs> at, at stitchingthehighnotes on Instagram. There are show notes down in the down bar, and there's a Ravelry group, which I'll be talking about throughout the episode. And I think that's it. Hello, how are you all doing? I hope you've had a wonderful week, week and a half or so since I last visited with you. I have been very busy. We had our first concert at the San Francisco Symphony where I'm a professional member of the chorus. And so that was this past weekend, as well as Vogue Knitting Live San Francisco, all on the same weekend. It was quite the weekend. Um, so I have lots to share with you. Uh, I have a little bit of a scratchy throat and I'm hoping it's allergies. It's Thursday morning, just before work. The sun just finally came up. Um, but there is yarn con crud going around, a cold. Um, so, and I was around a bunch of singers, so who Lord knows, and it's back to school, so we'll see. Fingers crossed everybody, but needless to say, I have my coffee. Let's grab your beverage of choice and let's get started officially with tea time and straight into makes in progress. I was this close to having a finished make. Not quite. Let me take a little sip of my my coffee. It's not pumpkin spice latte today. It's a regular latte or almond milk latte or nut pod latte. Mm -mm -mm. I was so close. I've been a monogamous maker outside of some lovelies for the shop this past week um, because I really want to get this done. So this is my this behemoth now is my Summer Dreams Pullover by Marcella Chang. I'm gonna move, caught on my stool here. This is something that I was making for the Summer Make Along, the second annual Summer Make Along, which was a uh, make along I hosted from May until the end of August. Um, and I hadn't finished my main project, but I'm this close to finishing it. Um, a heads up, I'm going to be announcing prize winners for everyone who participated um, later on in this episode, so stay tuned. I'll have time stamps for each segment in the down bar below as well. I'm going to try to get back to doing that. Back to my make. So here is what I've done, which is quite a bit, I think, since the last time you saw it. Ta-da! We have sleeves. We have a lace yoke. Oh my goodness, I love it so much. It's very pink, <laughs> which I knew was gonna be the case, but oh my gosh, somehow now that I have the lace yoke on, it's super pink. I'm gonna take some video footage here to show you close up what the lace yoke looks like and kind of the arm construction because it's a little wonky to show and try to hold up here to the camera, but I adore it. I am now finished the lace yoke, which is lovely. I've attached the seeds, the seeds, the sleeves before I started the lace yoke. I still have, if I didn't show it on the video, here it is here too, some armholes here that I have to graft, which I will do at the very end. But now I am decreasing and doing some lovely God bless vanilla, <laughs> just stockinette in the round knitting on the neck band. And I'll show you a little bit here. Up at the top here, isn't that so pretty? Oh, I love it so much. And I'm doing some decreases, so I'll continue doing that. Then there'll be some garter stitches 
around the neck band to finish off kind of that collar. And then I will bind off with like a stretchy bind off. I've loved this. The lace section was very easy. Um, the way that it's written by Marcella is fantastic because you don't need to really use, if you can read your knitting well, you don't really need to use stitch markers to uh, delineate uh, the, is that the right word? We'll go with it. Um, the pattern repeats or um, kind of the lace repeats. Otherwise I would have had like a bajillion stitch markers on here. You can easily kind of see the marker and make sure you're lining up based on a purl stitch throughout the pattern, which is great. And it was easy to um, figure out the pattern so that I could like easily memorize it after maybe doing it three or four times. And then you do it again, repeat it throughout the round, which is quite large. Um, I love this yarn. It's Legacy Fiber Arts, um, Avon Calling. Again, I don't know what it is about now having the lace section at the top. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is the girliest thing I think I've ever made for myself. <laughs> but I'm very excited. I think it'll block out beautifully. It'll be a bit of a snug fit, but I'm not too worried about it. I think it'll fit really well. Um, it's kind of meant to be somewhat fitted, maybe about one or two inches of positive ease. So that's what I was aiming for. And I made gauge. I did do a gauge swatch, I believe. Hopefully I'm not fibbing, but I believe I did for this one. Uh, I adore it. So I've been taking it with me. I took it with me to Vogue Knitting Live. I know, which was crazy to do lace when you're hanging out with folks or, you know, in lectures and stuff, but I've been so committed to finishing this up and getting it off the needles and worn um, before it's full on non pink wearing season. Although around these parts, you can wear whatever you want. I think anywhere you can wear whatever you want. I have it stored in one of my favorite bags ever by Bags by Awesome Granny. I love this elephant fabric perfect sweater size bag so that's the main make that I have to share with you guys and the reason is so I went I was feeling really overwhelmed this past week or so with all of the makes in progress I feel like every episode I am talking about dream knitting about all of the things that I've either purchased or am planning to do or things that are in my queue. It's not all cow driven necessarily, it's me driven. And I was like, okay, my little Virgo brain was like, what do you do when you have too many things up in the air? You take each one down as my mom taught me, you take each ball down out of the air, you assess it. And what's the better, best way to assess it is to put it all in a spreadsheet. <laughs> So to pages or numbers or Excel, however you do your spreadsheets, I went, in this case numbers, since I have a Mac. And I created this spreadsheet, which I will show here up on the screen. I love it so much. So I created a spreadsheet that's MIPS and new projects, makes in progress and new projects. I call things MIPS because they're multi-craftual. They run the gamut from sewing, cross-stitching, all kinds of stuff, and knitting, of course. But I have on here, I decided to kind of, it was a very interesting thing to do. So I put on here kind of what type of make it is, what the status of it is, meaning is it a make in progress already? Do I have it on the needles? Or is it a new project that I wanna cast on? What are the status details, like, you know, where I'm at in the project, if it's something that's already on the needles, do I have all of the, is it ready to go, meaning I have all of the yarn, all of the hardware, you know, tools that I need, um, just so I can kind of get a gauge on timing. Then, you know, what are my cast on or pick up again to work on goals? So, you know, for the summer dreams, I didn't have anything because I'm already in the process of finishing that up. But there are some things that I want to cast on, like when would I really like to cast that on by? Um, 
winter things that I would like to pick it up again by, you know, just a way of prioritizing all of my makes. Um, and then a finish goal, um, which is when I would love to have this done by. Um, either there's a hard deadline because I need to have kilt clothes done by May 4th for a wedding, <laughs> or there's a make along goal, you know, that I would love to have something done by, um, or there's just, you know, whenever, whenever is when I would like to have it done by. And then who is it made for? And this was a key one. Like, is it made for me? Is it something I'm making for me, but it's for the make along or knit along or a stitch along? Is it a gift? Is it um, for whoever wants to have it? Is it, you know, kind of something that I want to make because somebody has generously given me something to try out? And yeah. So that's what I started with. I started by just dumping in all of my makes and then filling out all of these columns and then reordering them based on cast on pickup again goal. Um, so I could kind of calendar out all of my making. And as you have seen or will see again here, it's quite the long list. <laughs> and I I think there are a couple other things that I can add on to here now that I'm looking at it. Uh, so it's a long list, but by having those kind of timed goals, it makes it not as daunting because I can say, I could put that out of my head and off of my worry list because I was to a point where I was worrying about all of these unfinished makes. And say, you know, you don't need to think about that till November. So don't even like, have it on your brain. Just concentrate on the spreadsheet. Refer to the spreadsheet. Trust the spreadsheet. And another thing that was really interesting is that all of the things that are made purely for me or are, you know, kind of the things that I've noticed I've been working on a lot lately. <clears throat> I have a goal deadline of whenever, whenever it's done. And that's interesting because it means to me that I'm not prioritizing the makes that really bring joy. Not that they don't all bring joy because they do, but the ones that I like, I'm going to keep in my home that I purely prioritizing for myself, I'm actually pushing to the bottom. And that's where you get into this loop of frustration and um, stress if you are feeling guilty all of the time for making the things that you actually want to make, even though I want to make everything. But <laughs> you know what I'm saying, hopefully. So just seeing it in black and white and on a spreadsheet has really helped me and um and when i went to vogue knitting live which i'll be talking about throughout the episode here but one of the things i did is i went attended a lecture on sunday by carson deemer who is i had seen on the fruity knitting podcast which i'll link down below or up here if i can figure out the tags and everything um, who is from San Francisco, he lives here, and he is a guru about ergonomics and knitting sustainability and knitting comfortably. And as a singer, I've learned kind of proper posture and all of that in order to get your instrument at its optimal, optimum usage and, and Alexander technique and things like that over the years. Do I always do it? No, <laughs> but I kind of know the lingo and what I need to do and my little quirks and everything. So I've always found it interesting, which is why I took this lecture. And it was talk about crazy timing, but he recommended in his lecture that you create a list, create a spreadsheet where you detail a lot of the things that I had detailed out in my spreadsheet. But he recommended that you also include the techniques that you use for each project, the size needles, um, because that will factor in the stress level that is associated with each make, with each project. 
And that's something that you really need to factor in in order to be making sustainably, in this case, knitting sustainably. Because if you're doing crazy cables and all of this stuff on large needles with slippery yarn and you don't have the right needle, of course you're not gonna wanna work on it because you're sitting here super tense trying to do X, Y, and Z. And my thing just paused, so. Hold on, let me make sure I'm still recording. <laughs> I think we're still recording. We're gonna do it. Okay, so as I was saying, you have to factor in the tools and the techniques that you're using and utilizing for each project because it'll impact your stress. So the more that you can do to alleviate that, either stretching out the timeline that you're putting upon yourself <clears throat> for finishing the make, um, ensuring that you have the right tools. So if you have a slippery wool, like I have this one project that I'm thinking of that I love. I love the fabric. I want to wear it so bad. It's the I'm in love with an 18th century Scotsman by CC Allman of uh, Java Pearl Designs. And it's a languishing wit because there are so many beautiful cables and techniques and you really have to be paying attention. You can't even listen. I can't hardly listen to I can't watch TV I have to like just listen to an audiobook um, and you know there are a lot of cables and stuff that I'm not really used to it's a little bit harder to read my knitting the yarn I'm using is this gorgeous kind of bamboo wool mix so it's slightly slippery and I'm using carbons needles but I'm wondering now if I need to switch to wood with a really pointy tip maybe I need a point to your tip so I'm going to be taking a look at that and assessing it and ensuring that I have all of the tools to make this as relaxing and sustainable in it as possible. That is what I wanted to share with you about the spreadsheet because, and tacking on this lecture, because I know so many people have been talking about and I've been discussing with folks kind of their stress levels right now with making. And I think it's something that happens every fall it's like where everybody's back to school things that you put on hold because your kids were in summer out of school for the summer and you were doing vacations and you were just doing easy breezy knits and everything and now the weather has changed and you want to make all of those gorgeous cabled sweaters and you're already thinking about gift knitting and it's just all of it's like all of a sudden you have time and the elements and the environment are set up to knit and you're like, oh my gosh, where do I start? I have so many desires and wants. So I would recommend creating a spreadsheet. I'm happy to share it with you. If you all are interested, let me know in the comments down below. I'll see if I can add it to the Ravelry group and maybe even to the website as well, stitchingthehighnotes.com. Um, yeah, but modify it for whatever you need to do. If you have if you've already created a spreadsheet or some kind of organization like that, let me know. I would love to hear about it because it's really helping me and it's I think going to be a valuable tool as I continue to make. So, onward with the podcast. That goes into let me my little show notes here. Oh, I wanted to mention that the Pumpkin Mal, the third annual annual <laughs> the third annual pumpkin mal has begun uh it started september 15th and now it's full throttle going i have to catch up on ravelry still um and so many people have finished makes and sewing and all kinds of stuff and crochet and cute little pumpkins and garments and oh it looks so pumpkiny and wonderful as i see that i'm gonna take a sip of my coffee here um, and the chatter thread is going crazy. I'm co-hosting this with um, Gabby, my fellow pump queen of Once Upon a Corgi. And she has a chatter thread and a finished object thread in her group as well. So go over and check that. Double dip if you finish an object. Make sure to enter it in both um, the Stitching the High Notes finished object thread and in the Once Upon a Corgi finished object thread. We've been getting some prizes in from you lovely makers out there. Thank you so much. One of which I just picked up at the post office the other day. So let me share that with you. Oh, I love it. Mm -mm -mm. 
So this is a adorable bag from George Ann of Stitching Plaza. Oh, it's super funky. It's a bag and also a DPN holder set. Uh, isn't that amazing? It has like all of the little snaps. Put your DPNs or needles in there. Keep them safe from poking through your project in your bag. And then this gorgeous drawstring bag with gorgeous pumpkins with this kind of gingham purple background. Isn't that cute? And the lining inside is the same as kind of the top there. Beautifully made as always. Perfect for a sock size, I would say. Maybe a couple of skeins on a small project. So thank you so much, Georgianne. This will go to a lucky winner of somebody who is drawn from the finished object thread at the end of the mail. So thank you so much. So yes. So that is going on. I. That's partly why I'm feverishly not feverishly. See, I need to like change my language about my makes too. That is why I'm eagerly, excitingly, lovingly finishing my Summer Dreams pullover because I really want to cast on the mittens um, very soon um, and the socks that I have um, queued up to go, which I'll talk about when I cast them on because I feel like for two years, literally, I've been talking about these mates and I kind of just, I'm, gonna cast them on and then talk about them <laughs> so otherwise I'm teasing forever <laughs> so cross stitch corner poor cross stitch didn't get any love this past week and a half due to schedule and determination and eagerness for finishing the summer dreams uh, make along but I did at Vogue Knitting Live this will segue into new treasures get a cross stitch kit, which I love. So let me grab that. Before I show that, I did wanna say that I am going to start, hopefully this week or weekend, um, the Playing With Jack's pumpkin stitch, uh, stitch pattern um, by Cricut Collection. Uh, and I found linen and fabric in my stash for that. I think it's 25 count, but I don't really know too much more beyond that because it was part of a grab bag that I got a couple of years ago from Needle in a Haystack in Alameda, California. Um, when they moved from one space to another, they had a huge sale. Um, and so I got a grab bag of some lovely fabric or linen or however you want to say it. So I will show that. Um, once I start it in the next episode. At Vogue Knitting Live at the Starlight Knitting Society booth, uh, they had some gorgeous cross-stitch kits by Junebug and Darlin. And I got this one, Find the Witch Within. It called to me. I'm trying to find the little thing here. Oh my goodness. So this is kind of the photo of what it'll look like. Isn't that funny? And classy at the same time. So this is something I would love to have hanging up either in my craft nook or by my door. I'm trying to have like, I love having like subtle, classy, artsy things, handmade preferably. But then when you look really closely, it's like super nerdy or super <laughs> like subversive, like subversive cross stitch is one of my favorite things. So I love this. I loved the shape of the hoop um, and how it's like this long oval that's landscaped. Um, and the kit, oh my goodness, is fantastic. The thread comes on a library card. Do you guys all remember these? <laughs> Which is great. And it comes with the hoop you have here, which you can either make your project in the hoop or it can be displayed afterward and or displayed in it afterward. It comes with the 
fabric, which is a 14 count Ada cloth. It's another black make. I have another one on the knee, on the hoop, if you will, the Q snap. I came with two tapestry needles, the pre-cut DMC floss, as you see here. Um, and it comes with batting and felt for the backing once you finish it for the frame, which is fantastic. Such a lovely, lovely thing. It comes with hand-drawn instructions specific to each kit. So it came with the instructions, which I will not show you. And this is a five by nine inch embroidery hoop. If you were wondering, it's wood. It has kind of the classic screw top closure. Love it. So I have to add this to my spreadsheet, figure out when I wanna start it. Is there, for cross stitchers out there, is there another time that we do kind of a stitch mania thing? <laughs> that I could tap into or is it just in May stitch mania that's kind of all we need and then we do mania throughout the year let me know as I am still getting fully into this new burgeoning cross stitch world I like to because I don't know why it's kind of fun to like I love stitch mania because it gives you an excuse to cast on all of the things with no pressure to finish it by the end of that month, unless that's what you wanna work on. But it was just very freeing to just start all of these projects. And with cross stitch, I don't feel as um, stressed to finish some of those during certain timelines. You'll see a lot of those are kind of near the bottom of my list in terms of like, and when they're in order of when I want to finish them, a lot of them say whenever. Um, but, um, yeah, I really want to make that one. We'll see. Other haul, that was my air conditioner. Hopefully that wasn't too loud, but <clears throat> it was needed. Uh, oh my God. I, I'm like just flashing it. So Vogue Knitting Live, I went to a variety of booths. There were lots of gorgeous things there. Um, I decided that I wanted to get some things from the friends that I was hanging out with and support their shops and that I didn't really have any, in some cases, anything in my stash <laughs> of theirs. And so I went first to um, Tristan and Christy. So Christy owns Yarn Cafe Creations and Tristan owns Dragon Horde Yarns and they shared a booth. They have the mother-daughter duo hosts of the Girls in the Yarn Cafe podcast. Oh, so good to see them. Um, and so I picked up a couple of skeins of Yarn Cafe Creations who I, I didn't have anything of yours, Christy, in my stash, which is hard to believe. And I was on the hunt specifically for DK or other side, other weighted yarns that I don't really have because all this is for the most part fingering weight, as I know a lot of your all of your stashes are as well. And this colorway, I'm in the Halloween spirit, you guys. Look at this. Oh my goodness. Can you even? So this is the Blair Witch Project is the colorway. It is Autumn Halloween Horror Collection. It's a mocha DK weight, 100% superwash merino wool, 28 yard, or 218 yards, 100 grams in each skein. And I sat with my good friend Margaret, hi Margaret, um, who we kind of went to Vogue Knitting Life together. We took the same classes and lectures and went to the marketplace and stuff. We sat and looked at patterns because we were like, we can only buy things if we have a specific pattern in mind. And I have two in mind. I have a honey cowl, which I'll show a picture here. And then another cowl, which I'm leaning towards, which is, it, they're both DK weight, obviously, cowls. Um, the name is escaping me, but I'll have it down here in a photo, which I think would look gorgeous in this yarn. I really love the stitch pattern. I think it's really interesting. And I'm really into cowls right now. I really want to keep building up my cowl wardrobe, if you will, because <laughs> that is something that I will wear 
most often um, knitting wise I'm learning over time as well as sweaters but definitely cowls I love wearing basic well I wear a lot of black anyway for singing but I love wearing really minimal <clears throat> kind of neutral clothes and then real big pops of color and design and texture in my accessories I've always kind of been that way um, you can see in the corner here this lady Ugh, that's awkward right there um, my mix 34 cowl was I wore it for the for the first time for a full day out not just to and from work um, and it was a good it was a great success meaning it was very comfortable to wear it grew on me over time it's very cozy it has mohair and silk in it so the mohair didn't drive me too crazy it got in my mouth a couple of times but hey and um, a lot of people gravitated towards it, which was, you know, made me feel really good about all the time that I, and love that I had spent making it. Um, partly because of the color. I think the green color is really gorgeous. It's a lime colorway. Uh, Shibumi knits, all of the details are in my project page on Ravelry. Um, and then the next day I wore a cowl, my tail is oldest time cowl, which is a striped cowl with mustache yarns and a pattern by a little skein in the big wall. And that's another kind of big pop of color kind of cowl too. And that solidified, this is my style. I like wearing really interesting accessories and then all black because I was wearing all black for, <laughs> for the concerts. Back to the haul, love this. I have to add it to my spreadsheet, the cowl, and see when I will cast it on. It might be something I cast on and I want to make like the weeks leading up to Halloween because it has such a Halloween vibe to it. So, we'll see. And then I picked up, oh, at the same booth, uh, the ladies gave me birthday presents, which were so nice. So thank you all for your, they, and thank you everyone for your lovely notes um, for my birthday, which was last week. Whew, getting up there, you guys. <laughs> but thank you so much. I had a fun day of working and rehearsing, <laughs> but I had a great weekend um, the week before with the shop, first shop update and the opening. Um, and then of course, Vogue Knitting Live was kind of my big birthday weekend which was nice so Tristan surprised me oh here are my needles Tristan surprised me and said pick a skein any skein and I was like oh my gosh I don't know what to pick because everything's so beautiful dragon horde yard I also have not um, had anything of hers in my stash yet either and because I was wearing my mohair cowl that day, I thought, okay, I'm, I have this idea. I think I'm going to build up a mohair stash, hit it while it's hot because it's really trending and indie dyers and dyers are dyeing mohair like crazy right now. And so I would love to start, I want to try out um, doubling up like I did with this cowl um, a strand of mohair and a bare yarn or a cream color yarn or a neutral yarn that goes with this game. So I picked up this gorgeousness, which is her Muse colorway. Can you even? Look at that pop of yellow. Oh, so pretty. It's so soft. So soft and floofy. So this is Pegasus Base Lace Weight. It's 70% kid mohair and 30% silk. It's 50 grams, 459 yards. This will go a long way. So, oh, I love it so much. So thank you so much, Tristan. I adore this. I can't wait to use it. I think this would be a lovely thing to make for the new year. It's got a lovely kind of wintry new year vibe to the colorway. So adding it to my spreadsheet. <laughs> and then Christy surprised me and said, you should get a birthday gift too. And you know, tell me which colorway. And this was on the next day and everything had been packed up. I was hanging out with the ladies and, and Kay, how could I forget 
to mention Kay. Kay, the crazy sock lady, was there helping Tristan and Christy out. So I got to hang out with Kay as well. Hi Kay, if you're watching. Um, so Kay and I were sitting there and Christy was like, pick a color, any color, but it was all packed up. We were hanging out while their stuff was getting packed up <laughs> for the loading dock. And I was like, I just remember green. I just remember this like crazy green skein that like called to me maybe because I was wearing green the green cowl that day I don't know but I remember seeing it on their podcast too <clears throat> pardon me and this is Nightmare on Elm Street isn't this great I love it so much so this is the biscotti sock fingering weight I think this is going to be a hat just saying crazy green hat and oh, I love the pop of red in there and all of this beautifulness speckled oh, love it thank you so much so this is 85% superwash merino and 15% nylon so there we go and then the last thing I picked up at Vogue Knitting Live was something that I've had on my list for quite some time and just haven't had a chance to get it. And this is um, from Nicole of Hugh Loco, who I adore and I was so excited to hang out with Nicole a bunch this, um, this past weekend. It was wonderful to see you, Nicole. And she has a collection called the Backyard Chicken Collection. And I will put a link down below to her website and to Tristan and Christie's websites, of course, too. Um, but for uh, Nicole, about kind of her idea behind this collection, because she can speak to it a lot better than I can. This is from the Roosters kind of sub collection, and this is Cream Leg Bar. This color combination sang out to me one because it just looks like a rooster like a chicken and a rooster I loved this combo of colors here I don't know if the color that looks pretty true is this really subtle buttery yellow and this kind of terracotta red and then there's this gray brown speckled creamy gorgeousness for the main skein. Amazing. So I can hear some of you going, Joanna, you have more sock yarn. What are you doing? <laughs> I, um, I kind of want to make a cowl out of this. So I know that there's some sock, um, ideas. I might make the coffee talk socks that I have in my queue, um, by Tracy of the grocery girls, but I, I'm really into cowls right now. So I'm on the hunt for a cowl where I think it would be really great to use these two colors on the borders on the top and on the bottom and use this in like a really pretty texture in the middle. So I'm gonna go on Ravelry and hunt. If you have any ideas, let me know down in the comments below. Um, but I'm very in love. I'm super in love with this one, so. That was my Vogue Knitting Live haul. I think I did pretty well, you guys. <laughs> um, the last thing about Vogue Knitting Live that I'll mention is I did take a class on Saturday morning and that was the um, A Taste of Rigid Heddle Weaving, a weaving class, beginner weaving. And this was by Deborah Jarkow, who's a really well-known teacher. I think she has a couple of craftsy classes. So some of you all might know her. She was fantastic. And I learned how to weave. And that meant how to set up, you know, the different types. I tried a different couple of the different types of looms. Um, I think the one that I was on was like a Grimwall. Oh, look at it here. Uh, oh, <laughs> Grimwall. Uh, Glimacra, Glimacra. And then I tried a Kromsky, um, which was super cute. Um, and it, yeah, I liked, I liked both of them. Um, but it was a lot of fun. It was funny because 
I totally, once again, my second kind of knitting related class, fiber related class, and I did not bring all the right tools. I brought just my little tiny travel scissors and we needed proper scissors to cut up a paper bag to help us. Um, I do not know any of the terminology when in one ear and out the other, which is why I have this handy dandy handout, but we were cutting up paper bags to help us with um, rolling around our the back part for the thingy. <laughs> anyway, I didn't, didn't have the right scissors, but I was determined to use those little tiny scissors. So I was like, doo, 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 and aside. But I really liked it. I think it's not for me, <laughs> the weaving, I think. I definitely was starting to get the hang of it. This is my little sample here. Ta -da. You can see like my tension is all crazy and I don't even know what that is. But as I was going along, I was starting to get the hang of it and it was starting to become really even. So, I mean, it's cool. I liked it, but once I got it all set up, I was like, okay. I don't know, it didn't sink to me like knitting and cross stitching do. Although now I'm looking at this fabric and it's really cool. Like, I think if I got a loom, it would be one of the, what a lot of people have, which are the super tiny 10 inch Ashfords that I could really truly just have here on my lap. Um, but, I don't think it's like high on my priority list. Like I'm not gonna be adding this to my spreadsheet. <laughs> but it was wonderful to actually do it and to try out different looms to, you know, you don't know until you try it. But I have, I think I am more drawn and have been for some time to spinning. So I am eager in the next year to really take a proper spinning class. I also think I really wanna take a class that's out of a local yarn shop and with a really small sized group. This still was a good size. I think there were maybe 20, I don't think 30, maybe 20 people in the class, 25. And it still felt kind of big and there were people of varying levels and it's, I'm so used to YouTube learning and learning on my own and at my own pace that I'm finding that these classes are kind of I had that with a quilting class that I took too that like I'm like what do you mean you're on to the next thing I still want to do this again or I want to repeat it or I can't I want to play back play back <laughs> so so it was good to take this class to kind of learn that and solidify what I've been kind of thinking in the back of my mind as well too so that was Vogue Knitting Live. It was great. It was small. It was smaller than I expected. I knew it wouldn't be as big as Stitch as well. So um, I'm not sure if they're going to do it again. This word on the street. I think they're going to concentrate on other cities. I think mainly because we have Stitches West. And I think also the timing of it was really wonky. Now in hindsight, Dreamforce for Salesforce, they're, they've taken over the city this week. And... They were moving in big time as Vogue Knitting Live was going out, so that added that created a bunch of hiccups, um, and maybe a bad taste in the mouth of some vendors. I think I'm only speculating; I don't know for sure. But um, and I don't think a lot of people knew about it locally necessarily. I don't know. That was my impression. But if you were there and you had a different impression, let me know. I'd like to go to the one in New York, which I hear is it's fairly big. And I think also there are a lot of folks that go to it that I would love to see and hang out with too. But I'm still, I'm really into, I'm finding out like the classes are cool, but I love going to see the makers and um, buy some lovelies, but I, really want to concentrate on this next year finding a knitting retreat and going to one of those um because I think that's more my speed <laughs> and more of what I'm looking for which is quality time with makers and um a few classes but in your pajamas and homemade food because who wouldn't want that <laughs> 
So, um, also new treasures was a lovely gift and a prize for one of you that I'll be doing a um, special prize drawing in the Ravelry group. There'll be a thread for this from Lauren of Lolo Did It. Hi, Lauren. And she reached out to me and said, hey, do you want to try this new yarn and colorway that I have created? And here is the story behind it. So a little inspiration. Last fall, Debbie Reese emailed uh, me, so I'm just gonna read in Lauren's voice here, asking if I would come up with a colorway for her specifications for her Swag Sweater by Caitlin Hunter. And I, of course, said yes. It is a beautiful fall colorway, but more so it got me thinking how beautiful this community is. I have made such wonderful friends and got to meet so many cool people who share my passion of color and the fiber arts. So I decided to make it a repeatable colorway and name it for the joy I feel for being a part of this community. K-F-A-T-B-F, or knitting friends are the best friends. A huge thank you to everyone who continues to support me in my passion. Here's what's in the package. A skein for me <laughs> uh, and a little yellow envelope, which I will show you all here in a moment. And in the second package is a giveaway for all of you. Yay! So the color wise and the surprise envelope um, will release on September 25th in her shop, which she has done. It's now September 27th, I think. <laughs> Today is Thursday. So here is the stain. I will open this up because it's all of mine. It is gorgeous. This, I think, is going to be... I think it's okay. Oh, look at this. Isn't this gorgeous? Beautiful, beautiful sock kit. I oh, love it. So this is our KFATBF knitting colorway. This is Summer Night. This mini skein. It's everybody now. <laughs> oh, you guys are getting a little shell there. Sorry. So this gorgeous skein will be going to, or this gorgeous skein will be going to one of you lucky folks. Check out the Ravelry thread and I'll have a question prompt in there. You'll need to be a member of the Ravelry group in order to participate. You also get a little, little measuring tape and then I think, I'm trying to feel, I think in this, um, oh, and you're also gonna get some lotion this little lotion bar here you can see doing a wonderful job and i think in this envelope are some stitch markers correct me if i'm wrong lauren and i will mention it in the next episode but i don't want to open this up i want to keep it all nice and wrapped up for y'all but in here lauren was so nice to give me one of her pins for the I think this might be in the envelope. I'm trying to get it out here to show you. So this is a special pin for this collection and it says um, hashtag KFATBF. Lolo did it. Yay! So thank you so much, Lauren. So generous, super generous. I can't wait to knit with this stuff. Add it to my spreadsheet. <laughs> I think that this would be a really great combo now that I'm looking at it for one of Tracy's um, sock patterns, which I have in my queue. So, thank you. I took the mystery out. There are a bunch of amazing light bulb stitch markers in this envelope. Woohoo! All right, I just want to briefly talk about some shop news and then I will introduce all of the prize winners for the Summer Garment Mail. Uh, shop news, there is an update this coming Sunday, September 30th at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, I will be in the future moving these to Saturdays and then eventually I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna have like official updates because it's a bit stressful for everybody 
myself included. <laughs> and I really want to work towards getting to a point where I'm just putting stuff into the shop as I to make it and let you all know on Instagram and the newsletter, um, which I encourage you to sign up for uh, on the website, stitchingthehighnotes.com. But until then, until I get really everything up and running, shop updates are a wonderful way for me to introduce items and to let you all know when things will be in the shop as we all kind of get used to the shop being in existence. <laughs> so I'm going to have upon popular demand. Um, first of all, thank you all. I can't believe I didn't start with this. Thank you all so much for your huge show of support for the first update last week on the seven, on the 16th. I am blown away and humbled by it. Um, everything was sold out within a half an hour, which is crazy. So thank you all so much. Um, and I, I love hearing and seeing all of the stuff coming to you on Instagram. So please make sure to tag me or tag, um, hashtag stitching the high notes. Um, I love seeing it and that you guys are loving it and, and putting all of these lovely things into use for your making. It just warms my heart. So they do try not to cry. And, um, thank you. So one thing that was very popular were the cross stitch bags, which I'm very excited about because I've been really excited about creating this pattern and, um, and continuing to hone my skills making them and make little tweaks down the line and new sizes. And I'll, I have so many ideas as I've kind of mentioned before. So I still had some of the gorgeous floral cross stitch uh, fabric. And so I'll have several of those in the shop this coming Sunday. So keep an eye out for those. They'll be in the medium sized um, cross stitch bags again. And then I'm gonna have a few more of those sized cross stitch bags, but this time in another fabric that sung to people, which is what I call the Gothic pumpkin fabric. I'll have those in drawstring bags for knitting projects, etc., which are slightly bigger than sock size. I would say like a nice shawl size, maybe two or three skeins can fit in those. Um, nice and squishy and gorgeous with like a denim cotton bottom. And uh, there'll be stitch markers. I was able, I found the vendor who makes the uh, charms that I had bought and found at a local bead shop. Um, they actually have, that bead shop actually has an Etsy store. So I was able to purchase them online, which was great because they are not the best part of town. And I had quite the adventure going to go get them. Let's just say there was a dude with a hatchet who held it up and said, look at my ax. So I won't be <laughs> walking by myself to General Beat anymore. I will be driving or going with a friend. But they have an Etsy shop and I was able to get more of the Halloween progress keeper charms that I'm making into stitch marker sets with a progress keeper, as well as hummingbird um, stitch markers as well, which I will try to have ready for the update, but they might go up at a later time. So yes, and there might be, if I have time, um, some more Halloween themed bags in the shop as well, but I might do like a little side update before the, the next big one in mid-October. I'm aiming for the weekend of Rhinebeck, ironically, so um, so stay tuned for all of that. There'll be some more pumpkin bags on Sunday as well, which I have pictured here probably. So that is shop news. And then now, without further ado, here are the winners for the Summer Garment Mail Make Along. A huge thank you to all of the makers who donated their beautiful, beautiful things for prizes. Um, I hope I do it justice in this little video montage that I created here. And I pulled all of the winners by random number generator. I will try to tag everybody uh, in Ravelry, um, but please do let me know if you see this before then and reach out to me on Ravelry by private message or at opera joe at stitchingthehighnotes.com. Instagram is not 
really the best way to reach me because I'm not always on direct message. So, yay. So, here you go. Congratulations, everybody. Yay! So reach out to me again and let me know, and I will send that lovely prize off to you as soon as possible. And thank you again to everyone who donated lovely prizes for the Summer Garment Mal. So, backstage knitting. Here we are at the endy bits, as the bakery bears say. I, yeah, it's been a whirlwind September. Not gonna lie, <laughs> between the opening of the shop, the opening of the seasons at the symphony and the opera, just the new season of fall, it's now officially fall, I believe. Um, you know, I had a new boss start at work. Hi, if you're watching randomly, hello. Um, so things, a lot of new, exciting life, changing in terms of rhythm and balance and life-changing things in September and then my birthday which always throws you for a bit of a loop in terms of like oh I'm another year older you kind of assess what you did the year before you kind of go oh my gosh I'm almost 40 what have I done with my life <laughs> at the same time so that always throws you for a loop so it's been quite the week and a half and definitely quite the month I um, had my first concert series, which I kind of briefly mentioned earlier with the San Francisco Symphony, 
and that was fantastic and now we blissfully maybe not so blissfully because we'll have to get our muscles back in November but we're off all of October which is great for me because now I can really concentrate on work and the new rhythm I have going at work which is fantastic and all of the momentum that's building there which is really exciting um, for some of the projects that I've been working on but also for the shop I can really dig in and get a rhythm going hopefully knock on wood with the shop and also have time to prep for the busy holiday season ahead it is upon us you all so yeah so stay tuned for all of that and yeah I mean I did a lot of backstage knitting I grabbed my sweater every time that I was backstage I think I even I shared a lot of it on Instagram stories if you follow me um, on my personal account Opera Joe um, I always kind of do fun little videos and stuff there were a lot of children in this concert series so that took a lot of energy for yours truly <laughs> so yeah, I don't really have too much more to share there. It's hard because I share so much on Instagram, so I feel like I'm kind of doubling up. But I, as you can tell in this episode in particular, I apparently am chatty Cathy, so I'm happy to chat away about various things. Um, as always, if you have a question or any thoughts or comments or ideas, please let me know down in the comments below. I'm going to wrap it up so I can head off to work here, but... I hope you are all doing well. I hope your makes are going well. And I will see you all again very soon for a nice lovely visit here on the YouTubes. Talk to you soon. Bye.